Uh, good evening. Today is Tuesday, November 21st. This is the Joint Town Council and School Board Finance Committee meeting. All are present other than Carrie Lyford and uh, Sean Babine and Leanne Casalionis is joining us from the school board and she will be, um, as far as I know, on the Finance Committee going forward. Unless I'm not sure things. Don't commit. Yes. So um, we just wanted to regroup. We've we've talked at our meetings all along, which really haven't haven't stopped. That we all agreed that we would like to continue our meetings on a regular basis, pretty much year round. And so one of the things that we need to do is create an updated schedule mm -hmm. of our meetings and to find out times that work for folks, times that don't work for folks, and sort of plug those into um, the schedule that we've used in the past, but expand that for a full 12 months. Uh, so it looks like Kate brought last copies year. for everyone. That's last year's fancy Easter color grid oh, there. Oh. With all the meetings mapped out on it, we have looked at that recently, just to sort of get an idea of the, the snow and the timeline around the budget process. But I and so I think last year we were primarily meeting in the afternoon, and that didn't that towards the end of the year didn't seem to work as well for everyone um, with jobs and families and all of that. So. I'm open to new ideas, new times. Do we want to vary the times? That was one of the ideas that came up at our joint town council and school board meeting. Do we want to um, vary the times so that if, you know, 7 o'clock works for some people, 2 o'clock, having it spread out over the course of the year, that allows the general public to come um, for times that might work for them. Any suggestions or ideas? From the crowd. One schedule change that uh, I'd like to advance is we'll do the presentation on the normal schedule. That's the first Wednesday in April. That's always uh, been the recent tradition, anyway. Mm -hmm. You may recall uh, we often we always do first reading that same night, and that's been the source of some concern, uh, some members of council and, and the public. So I think the simple workaround is that the council would uh, take that. The, the budget up in first reading at a special meeting, presumably the second Wednesday um, in April. So we'll just separate the two. Okay. So we'll, Julie and I will still stay on schedule to do presentation that first Wednesday of April. And I'll just work with council leadership when that gets settled out um, in terms of scheduling. <coughs> I don't know about, yeah, everybody for meeting times for me, uh, my schedule's changed a little bit, so mornings or evenings work, but certainly to get to your point, if we want to do some during the day, I can be flexible too. I just need a little bit of notice. To right, and I, and I think that's probably the case with a lot of people. If we have enough notice of, okay, the meeting in May yeah. is going to be at 2 o'clock, it makes it a little easier for everyone to work around. But um, I know that's really hard with full-time jobs. <laughs> So, and I have a, an interesting challenge this semester coming up. My husband's teaching an MBA course every Wednesday night at 5 o'clock. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm looking for babysitters um, who can pass the background check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Preferably dry. You're not going to be mom. Maybe you should bring her. I'm sure she could contribute. <laughs> well, Kate and I discussed that. <laughs> we did talk about that. Ava is a very thoughtful and intelligent four-year-old. Um, <laughs> Right <laughs> <laughs> so Wednesday nights are typically the town council meetings, so that will right. become sort of problematic for you once April 5th is. Right. What I'd prefer not to do is then schedule, you know, all of our joint meetings to be on a Wednesday. also in the evening on Wednesday. Right. Okay. okay. It's really hard. Chris, what works for you? Julie, really, when are you thinking yeah. that the leadership team will be ready to share their pleasure with the school board because usually we do that at the end of the first week in April. Um, we will be ready. We are already beginning our conversation, so we have an initial um, sort of uh, mid-year, mid-FY18 year reflection meeting that will um, start next week on Tuesday together, and then we'll um, 
begin to map out our internal schedule. So we will be um, definitely on schedule to present um, either that we can do it after the um, budget presentation on the 5th to the school board, or we can do it prior. I mean, I, if we liked the way that flowed last year, either way. Because I think our, the next meeting we would have would be March 16th, right? That's the school board meeting, or that it'll be the 17th this year. Yeah, and so I think that's something that we can work out yeah. Yeah. on our schedule. I didn't know if you wanted to have that done before. Any kind of public presentation. We can do that. And Chris, what what's going on with you? Um, I mean, I, I could probably be flexible with, with enough notice. I'd, I'd like to try and keep it consistent because then I can just block that time out on my schedule yeah. moving forward. But mm -hmm. but I, I mean, I could be flexible if we have to. Okay. And so maybe these meetings stay consistent and the special if we come up with different ideas of a budget workshop, I mean a budget forum yeah. or a traveling roadshow, maybe those are different times that some of us that can be flexible during the day can do during the day. Mm -hmm. um, so do we prefer like a Tuesday, a Monday or a Tuesday night, I'm assuming, because Wednesdays and Thursdays start to get school board, yeah. school board and town council meetings? Yeah, to check on availability of the space as well. Yeah. I mean, for, for me, with travel, if we can keep it to the weeks that we meet, anyway, I, I, that we meet anyway, like either council or or, or school board nights mm -hmm. or weeks, um, it's easier for me for travel because otherwise, I usually try and schedule my travel for off weeks if I can help it. Understandable. So the first yeah. and third weeks of the month. Yeah. I think that yeah. that makes sense for us too. Way. I mean, I think yeah. it's yeah. just yeah. Yeah. safer. Okay. And Tuesdays, I think, are better for the school department. Okay. Tuesdays are better. All right. So look, Monday see, we're narrowing it right down. <laughs> First and third Tuesdays. Then the only thing, do we want? I think this year is going to be a, a challenging year, based on some of the conversations. We'll probably find out more as we get to the other. Do we want to add? Do we want to meet twice in January and February instead of once? I think last year it was once. I think it makes sense to meet twice if we have specific if we have topics. Yes, yeah, that's good. Right. Yes, yeah, okay. Um, so maybe just schedule one as kind of tentative and then... Well, we can, ske we can schedule both and then, again, as we flush this out, if we know, okay, on the, the third we're going to talk about X and then on the 17th we're going to talk about Y, I think that's good other than just like saying, okay, let's just meet on the 3rd and right. the 17th and yeah. not really have um, specific things that are coming up. It, it's hard in that we've all noticed that we really only needed one meeting in January and okay. that there wasn't a lot to, to, noodle to around, get yeah. down okay. into because okay. we don't have the things to get down into other than an update from Tom and Julie and mm -hmm. how many updates can we get. I think it'd be sure. easier to schedule it and then cancel and then it cancel to it. have to schedule it and then everybody's already planned. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, and some of it was, uh, it'll probably be driven by the, the conversation later tonight too, but some of the things that we worked on in the joint workshop, some ideas that came up, you know, sounded like it might involve some extra meetings and time and some other things. So yeah, I'm also I'm also wondering if we if you know we have discussed branching these these joint sessions out into communications as well, if we maybe right. take some of that off our plate uh, in terms of the how we're getting messages out there and, you know, interfacing with the community, if we push that maybe onto communications, joint communications, we can just deal with the numbers, the facts, and the figures, and they can deal with the public outreach aspect of That's it. That's a really good point, because a lot of times we're yeah. spending our time on communication. That's a great idea. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's a great idea. Um, I might just mention that one other challenge we came across when we were building the calendar last year and prior to that as well as the school vacation weeks because sometimes our school colleagues sure. are scheduling family time away yep. and you know so don't town colleagues as well but um, I think our April vacation February vacation this year is the week of the 19th right so that's fine which is it's this last year's calendar Oh, this is last year's No, oh, this yeah. is last year's So, oh, so uh, the first Tuesday is the 6th and the second Tuesday is the 20th. 
in, in uh, 2018. Oh, okay. The second Tuesday, excuse me, first and third. The third Tuesday in February would be during the school vacation, so we did do some shifting there. So what was the date, sorry? Um, so well, why, first don't we, why don't we do this? Uh, if we can arrive <laughs> at a meeting time that works, mm -hmm. we know it's going to be first and third. third Tuesday of the month. We can map it out. And staff will map it out. We'll come back to you with a proposed schedule that actually has actual dates on it, and we'll be yeah. mindful of school vacation. And those Correct. Sort of things. Correct. And just make the adjustment yeah. as needed for those months. Yeah. And what we did with those was simply just to push it out a week. And maybe if we have the space booked, at least then we work with communications and say maybe we do the first Tuesday, they do this, yeah. the third. this third, third Tuesday, or vice versa, however yeah, that works. That's, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's some crossover between the two committees. Is, is 6 o'clock too early for folks, or I mean, is the 6.30 give enough time? How does everyone feel about 6 or 6.30? 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock, yeah. I think staff prefers that. It's Right. Stay here. We get home earlier. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So let's is see. that is that uh, good and convenient for the public? Yeah. Well, we have three members here tonight. I don't know that we don't, we don't usually have a, lo a large audience, yeah. and they're recorded again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just want to check in. Yep. <coughs> I think first and third Tuesday at six p.m. Yeah. And keep the 6 to 7.30 time frame. Yes, that would be great. And then I think once you guys have sort of mapped that out, we can see, we should probably include communications in that distribution, so maybe then we can have, Peter and I can have the conversation with the chairs of the communications group to say, hey, this is what we're thinking. We spent a lot of time on communications, but we think that should <coughs> fall to you guys. Yeah. Do you want to take some of these dates? Yeah. It, it sounds as though the Board of Education is way ahead of the council. It, it will be late December before all committee assignments are probably sorted through. Uh, I think typically we'll try to do it at the second meeting in December, so the 20th. That will be known. There might be an opportunity for collaboration just before the holiday. Great. Do both boards have communications, or is it just? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yep. And if you can add the December calendar on here, sure. Because this starts with January, so if we could add December, that would be. It's an odd number, so. <laughs> I know it won't look oh as my God, my symmetrical as this, but we'll figure it out. Well, well, we can get crazy and put published. November on here and July. No. <laughs> 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 That's bad karma. That's bad karma. Um, and so I think I'll make it fit. I don't know that we're prepared <laughs> tonight to sort of talk about the breakout um, ideas and all of that until maybe we get down to debriefing. But I don't think we can add that to this calendar at this point. And and I'm sorry. What? Like the, um, we had talked about maybe changing the budget forum um, format and venturing out into different communities to. Um, Hold Q and A's instead of just one large forum, but I'm not sure that. Those, that those would supplement. So yeah. let's we'll put this calendar together. Yeah. Uh, there was some conversation about changing up or maybe not doing the budget forum, so that would be something we may take off mm -hmm. uh, or not. Mm -hmm. But we can always supplement to this if there's mm -hmm. extra. Mm -hmm. I, I might suggest too the first the first meeting that we have where all the committees are settled, we meet together with communications and we just kind of let them know what we've done and what we've talked about and kind of where we're at and maybe kind of give them a good base to start off so they're not starting from scratch and repeating conversations again. Maybe we just have that first meeting as a joint meeting to say, here's where our thoughts were, here's where we were, you know, whether it's community uh, outreach. Sure. Yeah, you know, that's that kind of uh, something that probably falls more clearly in the, in the realm of communications that we'd like to share at least a concept with you tonight yeah. and get your feedback on. Uh, but I think communications would probably be the one that would run with it. Yeah. And so your committee assignments for the town council will be when? They should be made on December 20th. Okay. Council chair, you know, leadership will be sorted out on the 6th. And uh, the following two weeks, I presume whoever's chair will be sorting through that whole committee process. Okay. And do you have an, I don't, I forgive me because I don't know, but do you have an official 
thing that has to happen on the 20th for committees to start working, or could we, like on the 19th, which would be the third Tuesday of December, have this <coughs> joint meeting with the <coughs> communication, joint communications, right. and sort of have an idea? Like Leanne has, mm -hmm. we haven't officially announced our sure. committees, but. Well, I mean, I think the, 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 the positive news, we don't really have a lot of turnover. Um, we've got really one person coming in that's that's not new, for, so to speak, but they've got experience. So, um, it, you know, I mean, we could we could use existing committee formats. We're meeting right now in existing format, and I think it, just to save time, if we wanted yeah. to do that, just share with the council, I think it would be okay yeah. to just have us continue in the roles until yeah. whatever changes, and then whatever changes, just weave the yep. different individuals in. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not like we're making key decisions no. in yeah. December. It's just more. Formalities of getting the right people in the room. It's a good point. It'd be great to keep the forward sort of progress. Yeah, so I think if we could, on that December 19th, meet as joint finance and joint communications, that would be a good kickoff. be a great start. Jerry, I wonder, uh, maybe we've moved past this, but there's a quote from Henry Ford up here that I've been carrying around for <laughs> years. I just like the quote in it. For me, anyway, it helped, uh, it resonated as I thought about, reflected about this process. I think this would be our third year or fourth year in a joint I think it's, your, it's the fourth. It's my fourth. third, I think. Fourth. Yeah. Yeah. So the quote is real simple. Coming together is a beginning, which I think happened three or four years ago. Yeah. Keeping together is progress. And at least from my perspective, uh, we've kept together through thick and thin, and I think we have made some progress. And we're probably somewhere in the in the last part of that, yeah. working towards success. I love that, Tom. It's a great one. So yeah. I, I just thought it might help be helpful for the group just to kind of reaffirm that what we're doing makes sense. It's worth our time and effort. I hope we get to success. Me too. We will. Thank you. Well, speaking about success, is there? Um, I'm wondering about the timing of the referendum, the budget validation referendum. Is there a reason why it's in June? Can we start <coughs> earlier? I, obviously, that impacts the way we organize our work. But I just thought of the reason it is. We we align it with the June primary, which is uh, a fixed date. Yeah. Uh, so just to be cost effective and efficient, we, we line it up with this already scheduled June primary. Okay. Otherwise, we'd have to hold a special election. Yeah, I was wondering because other districts <coughs> vote at the same time, but not everybody does, so I didn't know if there was flexibility there. A lot of your smaller communities still have town meeting, and those are traditionally in March. So smaller communities often have to vote on their budget at their town meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well, I'd like to go in March. <laughs> well, we did, we did talk about trying to change the process so that we had more state information at the time, but I just, I don't, I mean, every time I think we've explored that, we've run into some that that we couldn't overcome. I guess that's the trick of it, right? Yeah. Is the sooner you do it, the less information you have mm -hmm. often from the state. But even our own budget information continues to flow in. Right. Right. So the later you can hold that, the better the information More is. Accurate. Yeah. But then on the back side, you want to allow for a follow-up vote should be required before the end of this year. Yeah. So that's really why the primary case. Yeah. 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 And I think a few years ago, maybe it was four or five years ago. It was earlier. We did do a May vote. And, 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 was because and there wasn't a primary? Or and there part of the problem was we didn't have information from the state. So then we we're like, is there a way to push it back, you know, push yeah. it forward? And so it's always well, that Well, this year balance. I think we'll be, we'll have more information because it's the second, second year of the right. millennium. Yep. So. And we also have a, a pretty simple <laughs> financing structure from the state. Yeah, write the check. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. This is how much we owe. Nothing from nothing. You can come up with a few more. Yeah, but I think I think you pointed later in the communications. It would be so great if we could get to that. Yes. However, you know, that'd be part of our process. That success mm -hmm. that you talked mm -hmm. about. So that is definitely about. a goal. Definitely a goal. Stretch, stretch goal, as they say, right? Maybe we need to articulate our goals. Um, and so then before we sort of dive into the debriefing of our larger joint meetings, we thought it would be important to review our norms, which we've had since 2015. So if there's any, if 
additions or um, changes that we want to make, let us know. But we reaffirm them every year. And um, as we, I'll read them out loud just so everybody has them and, and knows them. Meeting members will practice transparency and avoid hidden agendas. We'll treat each other with dignity and respect. Listen first to understand and demonstrate respect, appreciation for the opinions and perspectives of others. Respect the roles and unique responsibilities of the Joint Finance Committee members. And lastly, bring a sense of humor to the table. Are there any other points we want to touch upon? Or are there any that you want to change around a little? Just change the reaffirm date. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can do that. You know, I, I, what I will speak to, I think, and I think Tom's quote <coughs> showed it pretty well. I think, I think, especially around treating each other with respect and dignity and respecting others' opinions. In the, in the years that we've been together, I think that's gotten better each year. I mean, I think that's really some of the progress we've made internally that it really had, and I think those are important things to keep because I think that that will be part of our success is just being able to have sort of that back and forth respectfully. I think each year it's gotten better, so I love having them here. I think it just reminds us. Mm -hmm. And you know, we laugh at Chris saying just just change the reaffirm date, but I think there's there's an, a valid point in that. This reaffirmed was January 19, 2017. It's now November 21st, 2017, not even a full year later, that we're already starting this process again in, in understanding that we need to have a lot of work ahead of us that needs to get done. So, Do you think we please. should put something in here regarding keeping, a, and I don't know if that's a norm or not, uh, the communications committee abreast of what we're doing? Or I, I, I don't know. Well, similar along those lines, I was thinking about, um, although these are norms for how we'll operate as a joint finance committee, I think that um, whether this becomes a value or a collective commitment of how we plan to work moving forward, it's important for us to listen first to our community as well and demonstrate respect and appreciation for the opinions of our constituents um, in addition to of each other. And I think that... Um, as I reflect on what worked about last year and what could be better, that's something that comes right to the forefront of my mind is just, um, it's a, we're putting in so much time and effort into this work and I think that sometimes it's hard to hear the criticism and the feedback, but the way we handle that and the way we um, listen to that and then respond sends a really powerful message to our community. So I think okay. that um, might be less of a norm and more of a value or a collective commitment, but I think it's important that we remember that. You could expand the third bullet just to say, uh, after others, just including the public, just to expand that concept that it's not just internally, the opinions around this table, but all the opinions and perspectives that come into the conversation. You could change others to all? You could that say the opinions and perspectives of team members and the community. Mm -hmm. And, and, and picking up a little bit on, you know, because we're bringing communications in now, mm -hmm. some of the things we did here, even from some of the council members, is could it be more inclusive? I mean, we kind of get here and we do a lot of the heavy lifting, but others want to sort of be a part of it too, so maybe kind of weave in that, that inclusiveness of other elected officials in our community and others is kind of a just part of our norm. <clears throat> I mean, I, I, I guess, you know, my, my I guess the, the I, I always try to keep focus on the fact that we've got a job and a role to do, yeah. you know, I mean, and um, I think we're all approachable individually as elected officials, regardless of what committees we're sitting on and how we're sitting. I mean, I think we've got to, you know, in, inclusivity is important, listening is important, um, uh, and communication is important, but we've got to do the work, and I think we've got to be able to have that space and that time to really dedicate to, you know, looking at the philosophies and the numbers and that kind of stuff. And I think what we do here, as it goes out in the community, maybe that's the best place to get our, our feedback and work with, with, with the communication team to say, okay, you know, here's our, here's what we've kind of, we're at stage one. 
you know, it's like making soup, right? The, the pot's on the stove, okay? So throw it out there. The pot's on the stove. What's everybody think? And then kind of have that kind of come back in through. I, I just worry that if we get to a point where we have, we have to be very careful how we do that inclusivity piece because it could either mm -hmm. dilute what we're trying to do mm -hmm. or it could, we could spend a lot of time listening, and, and which is important, but not a lot of time actually doing things. Yeah. You know, um, so I think you know I think we can work very good with our communications group to talk about best ways to get out into the public and best ways to communicate that. And certainly, I mean, we make ourselves available as as best we can when we can, and even to support their efforts if they're going to do some kind of community outreach or something like that. So, I think we can I think we can accomplish that. I just worry about if we make that too much of a focal piece or a goal, you know, and then we look back and go, well, we, did we really do that or or. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't want to say setting themselves up to failure, but um. so that does seem more like a goal, right? Mm. To keep, yeah. pe I don't know if this is the right way to word it, but um, either to work in c collaboration or to um, communicate effectively with the full council and school board, or something to that effect. Maybe that's more of an output of our work. So yeah. we're thinking about, you know, how are we going to conduct ourselves within? Same with that. Um, the way we engage with the community. It might, maybe those are goals? Yep, yeah, yeah, I would agree with that 100%. I, and I think one of the goals we had as a council, too, was better communicating with the whole council. I mean, we know what comes out of here, we're okay with what's happening here, but how do we communicate all of that information to the, to the council as a whole to make them feel like they understand everything and they're engaged and they're aware of what's going on? And, you know, that's why I think it was great when we started doing the, okay, what are our takeaways from this meeting? What are we going to, what are you going to bring to the school board? What are you going to bring to the council? Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe just work on that reporting out to the to the bigger groups. Work on that a little bit more, so, so that even those who can't be here, kind of get a feel. They feel like they're engaged. They can ask questions. They can they can jump in when they're uncomfortable with something, or if they want clarification on something. And I think for it's hard in the setup of the town council meeting or the school board meeting. You feel like okay, I'm just going to give you the highlights because right. we've got six other people here that need to give their report. Let's, right. let's just give you the highlights. But I think you're right in that before we leave here, we have a full rundown of, okay, what are all the things that we sort of talked about or had a hard discussion about and had to work through so that when we go back to the school board, I can explain that so people get a feel of, of what happened rather than just what the result of that hard conversation was. Um, yeah, I'd like to hold ourselves more accountable in that takeaway to do this discussion that we'd be very specific and mm -hmm. ask people to do things because mm -hmm. I felt as though they've been interesting conversations, but many times we right. leave without accomplishing anything, it seems. So, uh, yeah, if there are tangible things that need to get done between now and the next meeting or now, whenever, we should leave with a very clear idea of who's doing it so it gets done. And continuing that dialogue, I mean, we have phone numbers on the website of all of the members here. So like if, if I'm tasked with two different things but they require Peter and I meeting or continuing the smaller conversations to get to when we get back two weeks later instead of at the two week mark being like, oh right, we were gonna do that and we never got there. Like yeah. really making sure like okay this is gonna this is we have to dig deep on this. It's gonna take us a couple more meetings individually, Peter. Let's Nope. Go figure it out. Um, okay. So let's leave, let's try to. We'll have to be cognizant of leaving more time for that takeaway part of of the agenda. Um, so do we feel like we want to that third bullet at least make some sort of change to the norm? I was just grabbing some notes because. I did hear what I think Julie said that it's more like a goal for the budget development process this year for an improvement to the process, which is what we've been talking about a lot. So perhaps we keep the norms, which are the ways we behave with one another, mm -hmm. and then we can have another section on this of, page of goals yeah. and say, you know, mm -hmm. this is what we're really going to focus on in terms of targets for our own work in this in this coming budget year. Does that seem like a, a way to break it out? Can you read the way you captured them? Um, I just jotted two of them. Actually, I put them in the wrong order, but the first was communicate effectively with the full town council and school board and with the community. It seems to me would strive to do. 
And then second was to articulate and assign specific tasks to be accomplished and adhere to timelines. I like that. I just started a draft so we could you know, bring it back and share it as we were talking to this. Do you want to check back in on that? We'll have it as an agenda item that you're mm -hmm. at the 19th meeting. Maybe we can so adopt them then. Kate, can you send that to all of us and then we'll have some time to reflect on it? Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. So we won't quite amend it for the 21st yet. <laughs> it will have to wait a little bit. <laughs> to process. That's right. Okay. So. Uh, I'm just writing down takeaways. You heard that loud and clear. I'm going to have to learn to live to regret those. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think Kate so volunteered for that. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So far, we're all good, I think. Kate. I can be bribed with pie, though, to yeah. conveniently avoid that. <laughs> so, did we set our next meeting when we talked about the meeting? December 19th. December 19th. December 19th. And that's with the with the communications. Six to seven thirty with the communications. What time? Six to seven thirty. Yes. We don't have a location yet. Right? We got to check availability here. Right. Yeah. Well. Who's checking that? Julie. Oh. Julie will oh, check oh, on availability. Okay. So. The um, third item here is debrief on the school board and town council workshop meeting that we had in October. Uh, uh, can I push in and notify the communications committee? <laughs> Julie's going to check yeah, on a room. I think chairs could do that. And then Peter and oh. Jody can let the communications committee know. Let me know about that, <laughs> <laughs> Consider yourself let know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was too easy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the good news is, is that we do have some overlap because Peter, if you continue on the communications committee, and Jody and Carrie are both on the communications committee for the school board. Yep. So forget about spreading the work. <laughs> well, <laughs> 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 okay. Okay. we don't know if that's yeah, if okay. that if it's that <laughs> or not, but I think the overlap is helpful. Yes. So it's not like you have to re, you know, Face the whole entire meeting when you get to your subcommittee. Right. So the debrief, and then and I think through this we'll also have many more to do. action items for everyone. Share the wealth. So, so do you want to start, Julie? Sure. Um, Kate uh, kindly pulled a slide from our work together, and remember this is me just quickly catching what you all were sharing. Um, and then a Google form did go out um, to both the town council and school board as a follow-up. Um, if there were additional ideas that folks wanted to submit, so I thought I would just share them with you. Um, but first, I'll give you, you know, a minute or so of silence to read through and remind yourselves of some of the ideas that were generated. That evening? Yes, so there's likely um, some typos or words missing.
So while you're thinking about those things, some of the other ideas reinforce some of what was captured here, but with more detail. Um, the, the comments that were submitted were um, specifically about the idea of a budget, um, an ad hoc budget committee or not. Um, and I think it's um, at this time that we decided that's not the next best step for us. Um, and it kind of supports, if you look midway down, it says, how do we work smarter, not harder, by adjusting the, the existing structures. Um, and a lot of these ideas um, support that. So uh, the idea of like the traveling road show, going out um, to the library for a joint meeting or going to a school or going to a 55 plus community. Um, again, I think somewhere else on here it says like meeting people where they are instead of always asking people to come to us, especially through the cold winter months. I think that that's something that could be really smart of us. Um, changing the times of the meetings. So we've already decided to make them in the evening. That might be more accessible for some, but I know that poses a challenge for some in terms of uh, all of the types of meetings that we'll have because some of our community members don't um, prefer to drive at night and it's dark by 4.30ish. So we might want to think about that as we think about ways to best connect with our community. Um, again, like going to like the WOW lunches or PTA meetings or booster meetings, other types of meetings where people are already organized and just asking for a few moments to provide updates. And I think we could extend that idea to many of the service groups in our community that meet regularly. Um, um, so we also talked about the idea of having open public comment at the beginning of the agenda as opposed to the end. Is that helpful? I feel like we get kind of mixed feedback on that. Some people want to be able to hear what you're talking about first before they comment. Um, others would like to probably be able to comment in the beginning. So. That's something we've been looking at in policy around our own our school committee agendas, school board agendas. <coughs> um, monthly meetings from February to June to discuss what people are hearing or questions that they may have. Um, educate people that all of our meetings are open to the public. So trying to make these meetings more inviting, snazzier maybe. <laughs> um, and so people want to come for the entertainment. We'll also talk about meeting. the budget. We'll be good. We'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and this kind of goes to the idea of the Citizens Academy. Some feedback that we've been receiving is just people not sure how to participate yeah. at the meetings. That's and great. so that could be, you know, we've talked about this. We did, um, we've been having some meetings about proactive budget communication strategy and thinking like how do we make it, you know, bite-sized chunks for folks or um, just talk about process so people understand. I think for us, we're so embedded in it, it seems. Um, clear and obvious, but for other folks who are looking for an entry point, might not be as um, inviting. And then, you know, I think it seems to be unanimous that everybody wants to have a more di diverse group of citizens engaged in the process, um, so they can feel connected and ownership in the process. Um, and that was a lot of the conversation at the workshop that I was hearing, just as I was moving about and, facilit and facilitating. So. Um, Julie, was there any um, discussion about having any meetings like at 8 o'clock in the morning? I was just thinking sometimes the town hall is opening up, there's people coming in, they see the signs of a meeting, they might stop in. Yeah, I think that there were lots of ideas. Um, this, this, they're kind of general statements, but that time the well, if I remember last year, we talked about a ton of ideas too, so I think that gets back to Tom's point of like, who is going to own what and kind of just get them on the calendar. And I don't think they have to be formal all, every time. I think that some of them it's just nice to sit down and have a coffee. Well, it strikes me there's a difference between having a, a public meeting and having a meeting in public, right? I mean, yeah. conducting a meeting like this at the, at the library or the fire station doesn't necessarily change the the, the feel to it because we're still formally sitting around a table right. and discussing. Mm -hmm. People can just watch us discuss it. I, I'm thinking more along the lines of having, you know, w and using communications and to have those kind of dedicated focus groups where we just say, you know, you want to learn the budget process? Come to the library or, you know, uh, or we do a different session of, of a more of a give and take where kind of like the, the public forums, the communications team started, uh, committee started where, but you do it, you do maybe a little bit more structure to it, a little, yeah. little bit more of a topic instead of just kind of a free for all, come ask any question mm -hmm. you want. You know, we, we conduct a budget process, um, uh, 
you know, form where we say, here's the process, here's why we do the order that we do things in and just kind of explain things a little bit more. And maybe we, you know, what comes out of that is ideas for, you know, what else would you like to talk about or something like that. But, mm -hmm. but I think we, I think it's, I think those things have to happen in parallel with what we're doing. Yeah. You know, because we still got to do, we still have to put the budgets together and make the decisions mm -hmm. and do all the other stuff. And that's, mm -hmm. that's, have, that's yeoman's work that, that has to happen. And it's not, as, as exciting as we like it to be, it's not sexy and glamorous. It's not, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not a whole lot to draw people in as we, you know, as we talk about some of the finer details of it, you know. Yeah. You know, one of the things that did intrigue me was on this list, there was some conversation, I don't know if it was at every table, but I really respect the sort of the, the, the dialogue piece the schools have done every year, or I don't, I don't know if it's every year, it's maybe every other yeah. year, the community yeah. dialogue, where you bring people in, but you're right, it's not a free-for-all. It's a very sort of structured, facilitated process, but if we really want to get some of that input up front, mm -hmm. That is just an intriguing concept to me, that if we could work, and I don't know how much work, it must be a ton of work to try to put something like that on. But, that's, but it, it gives a, mm -hmm. a great cross-section of folks mm -hmm. to come. There was some really rich dialogue. You even had kids participating yeah. and students participating, and mm -hmm. some of it, it was structured, so some of the stuff that came out of it then could really kind of inform, at least we know some of the hot spots. That's really intriguing to me, and maybe that's in place, we thought that maybe in place of the budget form, mm -hmm. yeah. where our intended has sort of been dwindling, and it's much more of sort of questions, gotcha questions, where something like this community dialogue could be up front saying, here are, here's where we are, here are some of the things, what's, what are the hot items that could inform some of the communication work to follow that. That was really intriguing to me. What's the ideal timing of that then? I would say it was early, you know, like Jan the January, February sort of time frame that kind of we get the input as we, before we have numbers so people aren't all, that isn't the driver, sure. but it's, it's, it's more of, I mean, the top. The top. And, I think, and I think we can frame it this year, we already know there's going to be, as we always say, there's going to be some choices, there's lots right. of things on the plate. What is the community, want? how do we want to approach this? And yeah. I think it's important for us to remember too, I mean, ultimately our goal was to, to start having the discussions with the public about the three and five year plan, not about this year's budget. You know, this year's budget. This year's budget's almost already. I won't say it's already set, but you know, it's there's limited. There's really limitations. kind of limitations with what we can really impact and what we can do from that philosophical standpoint. We can make little changes here and there, but you know, hopefully getting everybody onto the where do we want that? You know, what are the things we want to be focused on in three years? You know, do we want to whatever whatever it may be, and let them drive that discussion. But but we do we are constrained with certain procedures and with certain parameters that we have to operate in and, and maybe even just explaining that to people saying you know yes we agree we need to change this stuff but it's not something that we can just throw a light switch and it can happen overnight there's a process that has to be involved with it and, and we can start that process and part of that's dialogue but there has to be a realistic expectations of when those changes can really happen and it's not going to be it may not be before June with our next budget or our next budget vote you know hmm. well what I like about the idea of <coughs> the community forum is it serves a very different role than the budget forum or the community dialogue. So the budget forum is about getting information out there and clarity on existing knowledge, right? Where the community dialogue is let's hear from, you're asking for input from the community. So we utilize that meeting, that meeting structure to inform our long-range strategic planning. Right. Um, so that was critical in us making the determination that you know, do we stay the course or do we have to, you know, reassess and reevaluate and make some different decisions? Right. Uh, that's how we use that community yeah. dialogue. And I, I would appreciate that in this process because as I think about just what goes in a budget presentation, what goes in a budget communication, I feel like I'm, we're always trying to guess what the community wants to know or this would be a chance for them to help us give us clear targets. But now in reality, the things that make their way into your budget, we probably talked about 12 or 18 months ago, or some time ago. I think mm -hmm. I'm really intrigued by the format and the process, but I think it ends, it's likely to be a 10,000 foot conversation rather than kind of fine grain that's really going to inform a specific set of budget right. questions. Right. And I think that's the important part of this. As long as we set that expectation out ahead of time and we say, yes, this is part, I mean, we have change has to start somewhere. Right. right, and we can't. We it's it's not responsible for us to just do a radical ninety degree turn in the middle of a budget 
process. I mean, there are, there are consequences to doing things like that as well that are not necessarily positive for the town. So, but I think we can find a way to start having that discussion and start building that. You know, let's use, for example, you know, debt planning, right? right? I mean, that's a long-term issue. Yeah, yeah, I see the takeaways being yeah. more kind of charting a course right. that, mm -hmm. you know, isn't kind of budget, a budget specific. It's longer range, it's bigger picture. Yeah. And but, as all things budget, oh, sorry, all things that we do within the budget process, so we're going to be in the middle of FY18, planning FY19, thinking about FY20. Mm -hmm. And so I think that community dialogue would be plant would be thinking about FY20, and so we just have to. There might be some takeaways that could be kind of. Right, and that's what I was going to say. Like you never but know what is going to come <coughs> out of those tables that people are all discussing. There may be nuggets there that we're like, oh, well, they're saying it this way, but they're not realizing that it's happening at Wentworth, and we're thinking of expanding it to the other schools. Or there may be things that we see. Right that do make it into this next budget because we're sort of already going along that path. But I think I think it's important to hear the ideas of not just what do they want in, in town or what do they want in our schools, but how do they communicate what's in the budget? How do I like to get my information? Or there could be other external... And I think that will help us form that communication around the specific budget that's coming out and, and we can say, you know, if we've identified, again, I don't want to pick on one particular thing, but let's just say <coughs> debt service is an issue that we're hearing loud and clear. We can start having that discussion now with this budget coming forward and this is how we're addressing that, that debt service need here. These are the things that we're doing. It's not perfect, but here's where we're at. We know we we're going to get to a certain point. Here are some things we're going to be changing down the road, but, but, we, but we've heard you. And this is how we're. This is how we can respond to that in, in stages. You know, is so it, it can't be all. Is it realistic to think we can pull this off? January, early February. Now, that's the next question. I the community would. dialogue itself is, is really crowdsourced, so it, it involves a lot of tech support and um, sort of building the agenda. The, the people who come to the community dialogue build the agenda. There's probably a way to do it in a slightly more structured way. Um, that could have a well, similar I that, outcome. I think that organic nature of it is well, really important. Yeah. That those that show up yeah. shape the conversation mm -hmm. as opposed to right. where all of us right. setting mm -hmm. the I guess what I'm saying is it. not to say that you know we we put the questions out there or the topics out there, but to say that it, it's a more it's a narrower focus perhaps than the sort of how do you see your school developing? In I mean, there are hybrid yeah. approaches. We could come up with real kind of big big themes or topics um, and then let the conversation be you know, very much organic around that but there's some kind of framework to the conversation. Well what's really a benefit of the community dialogue is that any community member creates the question and so it's their voice, their question and then they actually lead the discussion. They right. facilitate the discussion right. um, and so it's community members helping community members make sense of information and also talk about priorities and um, I mean obviously we always have school people on um, school officials teachers and you know leaders in the um, participating as well but I think that if you get too far away from that then again it loses yeah, that right. organic right. value. Have, but, I mean, similar, you could have you know we wanted to get more connection between the Board of Education members and the Town Council they could play that role of being there and have those communications. And then, too, I want to pick up on, Chris, I think you're exactly right, that, you know, it's sort of that Wayne Gretzky quote about why he's a great hockey player. He's a great hockey player because it goes to where the puck's going to be. I think what we have heard from some of the feedback, I think even saying, okay, we want to know what you're thinking not only about today, but three years or whatever the window is, what are you thinking? And I, and I think I've heard if there's a little bit, you know, if they know what the longer term picture is or there's some commitment to the longer term picture and they know that we're trying to work toward whatever that vision is, that buys us some some goodwill or some, some rent. So I think I think that community dialogue I, I would I, I think it'd be worth a try just to see where it takes us and what information we get. Um, set the bar pretty low about expectations. It's you know, we're trying this, we're trying to a new way to try to engage people. See where it goes, but uh, I'll get a ton of it. It's a huge burden. We probably 
I don't you know what I don't know about it. I, yeah, I participated, I but I appreciate there's a lot behind the scenes from tech support mm -hmm. to... Kelly, you change format a little bit to accommodate... A, if you decided you wanted to go ahead with it, like, what if... So I love thinking of dialogue. It was very exciting to go to and to come back from, and I, you know, jumped into Tom's office the next morning, like, oh, my God, that was awesome. Mm -hmm. But, like, what if we were to scale it down for this year and, and kind of create a community dialogue light a community chat, if you will, instead of a full-on dialogue. Um, and you could have a counselor and a school board member at, let's say, seven tables that are set up, and at each table there could be a flip chart, and we could rotate people through the tables, and at each table that table would decide what they wanted to talk about within that 15 to 20 minute window, mm -hmm. and the, there would be a scribe that could like record the comments during that discussion, and it would take out the technology list that the community dialogue has, as well as um, it would still be organic conversation driven by the participants, but it wouldn't have the formal process at the beginning where people write out their questions and then stand up on the stage and, and speak. So I think that we could make it a light list that would maybe accomplish some of the goals I think I'm hearing, but and respect the format, but make it a, some slight changes that would make it an easier thing to pull together by the end of January. So there could be seven different conversations at every table? No. Each table has its own conversation. Right. Oh, uh, there, yes, each, there would be po potential. But it may be that, you know, people really want to talk about um, how the comprehensive plan is going to inform budget decisions. Let's just imagine that that could be a topic. Mm -hmm. And so maybe Peter's table and Chris's table both are talking about that same thing, but they're talking about it with different groups of people and are getting different feedback on those topics. And the scribe would be putting the topic of conversation, and then staff would be in charge of kind of compiling that into something that's consumable after the event has taken place. It's just one thought. I think that's a good idea, Louis. I think you mm -hmm. could start it off with when people come in, just to have uh, a chart up and say, you know, what topic are you interested in um, learning about or talking about? And then from those topics, you can just put them at the table and then do the rotation. So, so I'm going to play the devil's advocate of that. Yeah. I feel like that's us creating the topics again. Right. No, no, I'm saying the citizens who come. Right. They, 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 they come in. Yeah. So the first seven they people get the topic. Topic. No, no, no. So no. that's kind of like an ed camp style where everybody yeah. writes down, like in an ed camp style, everybody's writing down like their question or their question. topic. And then you're sort of compiling them at a table and then you're compiling them as a group so that then you break out into these smaller discussions. <coughs> the, I, I think that gets sort of to the same point. However, I worry or wonder if less structure will make it harder for people to engage or make that make it more intimidating for people to engage. And I also am wondering if the, one of the great things about having the Google form that folks filled out at their table was it instantly within a spreadsheet and we were able to instantly utilize it in our strategic planning where now you're talking about all of that um, hand-scribed yeah, stuff translating. then getting translated mm -hmm. by someone so, else. Well, so well, the conversation well, has to well, happen with the IT department. Well, I'll, I'll introduce Jen, Jen Day was, was very involved in this. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll give you the old business analogy that we that I like to use with engineers is we never have enough time to do it right, but we always have enough time to do it again. So I, I think I, I like I like the format that we have. I, I I'd rather try and keep that same structure and format that we do for the just for continuity's sake because I think it's it's something the community has seen and and there's know and, they, and there's a familiarity to it. I'd almost rather maybe even push it out until a February you know yeah. mid late February if we can do it right yeah. rather than just do something for the sake of doing it and then mm -hmm. not really feel like we get good results yeah. from it or or be like you know I don't know if this was really worth it or you know or, or trying to kind of dumb it down a little bit for lack of a better word. And we might find find out from Jen that it actually is easier for her to replicate what she would say. Right. 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 So you're thinking like four 15 to 20 minute sessions and people rotate through those or so. I mean, I think that's, that's kind of what, what the last community dialogue was, right? We did it too, because each person, each group had like 25 minutes and then came the next second dialogue, so it was just two times. I won't read a picture about this time. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, I mean, I, to me, that's a that's a logistics thing, right? I mean, we can we can determine whether how many sessions we want to have. I think the big thing is, do we have the space? We need to have the space. We need to have the infrastructure, the, the capacity to be able to do that. And then we also need to have enough time to get the message out into the community. Because if we decide to do this, mm -hmm. and we have to commit to it, I think, and make sure that it's it's well advertised mm -hmm. and, and well known, mm -hmm. versus just saying next week, you know, come come to Wentworth next week mm -hmm. and talk yeah. about this. That's not going to that's and not going to go well. W there's a couple of other big community events that I know of. Um, so we might want to look at our community calendar. There's a community viewing of the map you live in at the end of January. Um, so that is. Uh, we showed that film last year, and we're continuing that work on reducing sexism and violence um, with our students. So there will be a, another viewing of that. That will be at the end of January. In early February, we're working on a big community event around um, raising healthy teens. So if you know a teen, have a teen, interact with a teen, might have a teen, um, it would be relevant and interesting, and it's also as coupled with like a community wellness. What if you think like there? a team? Does that count? <laughs> okay. Um, and so that's happening in early February, and so that's a collaboration between the town and the school department, um, the health and safety advisory team. So that's going to be going on. So I do think like mm -hmm. late February, February, February yeah. early yeah. March, it yep. might be. Okay. What did we just say was school vacation? Uh, oh, it's the holiday week. week. It's the 21st. The 17th through the 24th. Yeah, I, I'm just, just right. uh, I'm wondering how that's going to work vis a vis this budget process. I mean, that time frame, myself and staff, senior staff are fully engaged. We're almost 100% focused on budget. Mm -hmm. and. The, the outputs of that are not likely to be yeah. obtainable in time to at least shape my presentation. But, but keep in mind, this, this, the goal for this wasn't wasn't necessarily to impact this budget cycle. The goal was to start that 10,000 foot discussion about. Then, yeah. then yeah. would it be the end of the world for us to talk about it and plan it for right. mid June? Or, I mean, does it have to be this, I, this yeah. spring? I, I or mean, early it, this spring? it doesn't have to, but I think it could help us inform mm -hmm. our communications with the with the community on this budget cycle. Meaning, like, if we if we get if we go into this community college community dialogue or whatever, and we come out with let's say three or four topics where we hear oh, these are core issues, I'm not saying that we need to take the specifics of it, but we know those are the themes that people are kind of focusing in on, and then we can that will instruct our communications out into the public for this budget cycle to say, yes, we've heard, again, I'll, I don't want to harp on this, but let's say it's budget, it's, it's uh, uh, um, foreign language with the primary school. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of debt service. I was thinking of debt service, but, but thank you for that. Um, um, if it is debt service, you know, we, and we know that's clear, we can start framing this budget discussion around, you know, th we, we, we are aware this is an issue, and we know that, and you know, we may not be able to take steps in this budget to, to accommodate that, but we've started, or we've had that, and we're working on that, so that people aren't walking into a voting booth thinking, I'm not being heard, I, they don't know what's going on, I'm operating in a vacuum, and it's just talking. No right. No right. So I think the takeaway, the immediate takeaway from us would be more of a, more of a, a general theme of, of, of topics to, to, to try and use in our current budget discussions. You're right, though. I don't see it. I don't see us looking at that, saying, "Okay, well, we're not going to fund this piece of capital equipment this year because we heard at the public forum that that's not what's going to happen, or this is an issue." Mm -hmm. I, I think it's going to be more of a longer. But it might change the mm -hmm. thought of, "Oh, we should just bond this," as opposed to correct. Right. Correct. Is it operational? Is it right. Right. I, I mean, and we've already had, we're having that discussion that's already right. now. Right. The question is, is, is that. It, 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 are our priorities lined up with the community's priorities? And maybe this is a way to kind of help. It sounds like there's interest. Let, let staff work between now and the 19th. I would say we need to commit. Yep. Yeah, the communication. So, yep. We're going to do that. That would drive it. It's going to be honest before you know it. So yep. let us talk about the logistics, the technology, mm -hmm. and report back to you on and where that yeah. window walks to you might be. <laughs> when is the school committee dialogue scheduled for this year, or is there one scheduled? We don't have one there. We do it every 18 months. Oh, okay. And maybe we do this, we, we what follow the year is it normal? off here. So it's either yeah. like April, April or November. Or October. Or October. Or October. I mean, that's the cycle that I would 
I think would be ideal is to do it early fall. Yeah, then we could. So, but, but maybe this year, again, as we sort of crunch it to get to that, what did we say, early March, mid-March this year, and then our next community dialogue for the school is what, October? Are we already mm -hmm. in October? But, but let, let me ask that question. Like a, on a cycle. But, but, but is that, is, it, I mean, it, so April would, would April buy us time to really get the meat of our of this year's budget in place? I mean, we're always going to have tweaks, and we're still going to have things we're working on. But would staff be kind of through the heavy lifting part of the budget cycle, and then we could do it in April to start off that because we still have between April and June between first reading and second reading to to work on that comp stuff. But I mean, April May is heavy lifting by the elected officials. That's when you're doing your budget review, mm -hmm. right? I think if you get of course, too late, once I present the budget, it's all about supporting you. And that's, that's right. Your question. So I, that's why I'm wondering if, if, you know, to keep it on that April October time frame, you know, do we want to do we want to stick to April and then? I don't love April. You don't I feel April. like the later you get, the less. The more entrenched. Well, remember, we're not voting until June, and there's, you know, people don't necessarily have but a lot of numbers. But it comes quick. Oh, I, I know it comes quick. The question <laughs> is, is, does the staff do the heavy lifting, or do we, or do we do it in a, in a time frame where there's a, a lull in everybody's activity, and I, those aren't coming these days for some mm -hmm. reason. <laughs> I know one of the purposes was to engage people more. Mm -hmm. So if you earlier on, so mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of February, with a dialogue, then people become more engaged and want to know more, they will follow the budget process. Yeah, I think I if you see. want the benefit to accrue at the ballot box, right. so to speak, in terms of goodwill and you know demonstrating that, really that we're listening and we're working, um, I think you probably have to have that probably before we present the budget, frankly. Yeah. They, I think so. Yeah, because it will explain you know, how, yeah. how it's communicated. I mean, right. there may be something that comes yeah. out that we be, that you guys have been working on for two years, yeah. but the community just doesn't understand yet that it's we're at step two of a ten-step process. Right. I'm just trying to avoid avoid a situation where we get overburdened staff because they're trying to put the real budget the real budget together. I'd rather do it in late January than later. Okay. Certainly better than March. I think it would also be interesting to think about how this dovetails with our two-person roadshows if we choose mm -hmm. to right. do that. Right. Because I think the more information we have from this sort of thing early on, the more effective those are going to be. Sure. We yeah. have a better idea of the pulse of what's, what people actually want to know. And mm -hmm. be consistent among ourselves as well. Yeah, that's a great point. Well, and are we, are we uh, I'm kind of hearing from you that you're seem to be going down the road of this is all going to be on the school side of things. No. No, 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 not at all. Yeah, be this so. community no. forum would be a mixture of total budget. Issues right. yeah. Total yeah, budget. Yeah, absolutely. Town 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 looking at budget. Yeah, I mean the one total, town, yeah, one total town, yes. Okay. One town, one budget. No. Yeah. It could be beach cleanings. It could be, you know, yeah, it could right. be anything. You know, of course, of course. It could be work. It could be trash pickup. Who knows? <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. meant to be okay. the total budget, you know, Good. review and yeah. the choices the community needs to make about everything we're doing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, because if we do it the same way, the community's going to drive that. I mean, they could come up with a question that's, you know, uh, why are we, why are we bonding fire trucks? Why aren't we? Putting them in operations, and let's talk about it. And there could be mm -hmm. nobody at that table, or there could be 20 people at that table. So let us. Um, we hear you loud and clear that you know, I think we share in the interest in doing this. Let's look at the logistics and the details of what is can pull it off. All right. So I'm putting that as Julie and Tom talking to Jen Lim in IT. IT. Yeah. Did you start this? <laughs> <laughs> and then I do like I do like the idea of the we didn't do it last year we talked about it but I think as you know doing sort of that combined team to go out and have however that we've got time to frame that up so right, that's Peter is in charge of scheduling the <laughs> but I do think to your point there may be places that we go that there's a very small crowd and so they you know have like two questions or need clarity on two different things but then having that community dialogue already have happened we can say some of the other things that 
were brought to our attention were X, Y, and Z. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it might not be at the forefront of their minds, but it might be. Right. I think that what's going to make us most likely to execute on actually doing that is just creating a list of what are the, is it 10 places we want to go to this go. budget right. cycle? Is it, you know, and then just start setting that up and making a calendar is the only way that it's really going to happen. Um, I think we'd all agree that it's a good thing to do, but I know okay. for me, if it's on my calendar. Happens. So how about if Peter late, and I make a list of places yeah, and we can, I can, to go. and the Chiefs just did that for the Public Safety Building, so ah, they, they right. may have, right. they Don't may know, the I love it. They, they may know the places that they really got a engaged audience and where mm-hmm. they didn't, so. That's so interesting. And when is that time frame? Is that after mm-hmm. the budget's presented while it's still so. being deliberated? I think it's after it's presented. Yeah. So, so, so after April? So it's done react to, yeah. after the first week. Okay. So then the question, I guess, is, I mean, we've got it down to, to uh, a school board member and a, and a council there. Are, what about, I don't know what staff, do we want a staff member there, too, or do we want to have it be just a community-driven? Are people expecting Bring answers? Right. I expect there'll be some very specific questions. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to commit staff, to that, mm-hmm. I, unless, but what I would like to commit to is that if we, when we get to that point before we execute is we have an, an understanding of, if you know, if, how we need to get information back out to people when we don't have the answers that they're looking for right there and there. Well, I think too, like mm-hmm. if you publish your list, this is where we're going to go. Yeah. We're available for, is it, is it Q&A? Maybe there's two events where, you know, Ruth and Tom and Kate and I are going to be there for any questions, or Tom and I are going to be there for questions, or however, like we say specifically, of these 10 events, you know, these mm-hmm. two are going to be focused on this, these well, two. Well, it's not our setting expectations. What I've heard from our communications committee is that just the mere fact of make yourself available and listening to people, yes, right. mm-hmm. uh, you may know the answer and provide it, but if you don't, it's okay to say, let's collect your information, we'll right, confirm right. staff, right. we'll get you the answers back. But yeah, it's most importantly, they're listening. Yeah, I think it's kind of a mini sort of budget form. You know, if we're now, you listen, you may not have the answers, but usually there's no huge crowds. So you can get like an email or something, and then if they've asked that question, there's probably 10 or 15 others in the community that also, and so we can answer that group, but also then post it. Right. Yeah. 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 That really takes the place of the budget form, right? right. Like convening yeah. everyone at one spot to have all the answers right. at one time, you build that Q and A yeah. and share it out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I like that. All right, so Peter and I will be in charge of sort of starting the framework for that, mm-hmm. um, and then we'll report back on December 19th. And we'll draft people. Right. We'll, we'll volunteer uh. people. <laughs> <laughs> we'll fill in those blocks. <laughs> 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 I think we'll have better success if, if you say to them that you're not expected to have all the answers. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. We're here to listen. Right. And if you have seven of these sessions, one each week between proposal of the budget and vote, which is, well, probably closer to nine weeks, but if you have to take out vacation week. Um, if you have seven of those sessions, each counselor and each school board member, it's only one time that they've got to commit. So that's not, that doesn't feel like a heavy lift. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good, good point. I think seven is a good goal. And, and, and seven's a lucky number. And, and I think, and I think get to your point, I would imagine the format could be when you get in front of the group, sort of like the, the, the chief did, you'll have a simple presentation presentation that has the highlights, share it, and then turn it out over to the group. I'd almost like to just see whatever whatever they presented for the initial budget. Well, let's pivot to one thing Scott is excited about it rolling out this year. Um, There's this whole new, um, it's not a new concept, but it's a repackaged concept. They call it citizen-centric budgeting. What Julie's passing out is kind of the format that this uh, the government. It's the um, Ameri- I think it's the uh, GA. it's the AG- AGA, which is probably the accounting uh, government accounting association, something yeah. with the word. And I've got examples yeah. of well, it. But, <laughs> but the point <laughs> is, <laughs> I'm an accountant too, so I know how to do it. I'm going to pass around examples of what they look like. So the, the point of this exercise is rather than like the one-page infographic that kind of gives just the simple takeaway and that might still be of value to us, 
This goes a little deeper dive, and they have a prescribed format. It's no more than four pages. First page contains who we are, and I think I'm inclined to do um, kind of not narrative driven, but more infographic. Yeah. You all you the right? yep. uh, The second one, kind of how we're doing, and again, there's examples of how different jurisdictions have done it. The third is really kind of the, the financial end of things, the revenues and expenses. And the last one is really kind of forward looking, what's next? Mm -hmm. I like and this could, a story. this could be very likely to be kind of an executive summary that becomes part of the budget book, but it's also the piece that you all can take on your road trip. Sure. Mm -hmm. do, you, uh, do you, are you looking for us for input on which format, or are you going to just kind of let staff judge that? Uh, we're just at the MPC. Uh, the, the examples that, uh, that are being passed around, I chose them. You are certainly welcome to go to the um, AGA's website and you can see examples. You've got it on the bottom of your handout. You actually have that website right there. Um, and they have, they actually pass out awards for CCRs, citizen centered reporting citizen centric reporting okay. that they feel are really excellently done. So I went through and I looked at all the ones that have been given awards since 2014 and these are the ones that I liked the best and felt had the most, there, each of them had something I thought was worth exploring and worth incorporating. There isn't one that I think is the right template. Sure. Um, but I think that they each have things that are really worthwhile. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. I love the USA Today soundbite. Simple, yeah. I can understand it. It's a okay. format that's actually, the AGA uses it for CAFR reporting, um, but I think that it actually, if you think of the CAFR as a um, summary of how well we executed the budget that people approved a year and a half before, um, this, they're, they're companion pieces. And so this could be part of how we present the budget, but the community would then have an expectation of this is the format we understand, and when we release the CAFR in December, we release an, a version of this that reflects the CAFR as well, so that it becomes a communication tool that says, this is where we're going, and then a year and a half from now, you'll see how well we did getting there. I mean, it's almost like a report card. Yeah. yeah. And, that, and that's that be written. So that kind of ties into it. We actually start doing this longer term planning, saying this is where we want to get to. And this can kind of be a progress report, benchmark along the way, which I think then starts to answer some questions to folks. It's intriguing. It's great. So we're already committed to moving that forward. That it may well be that the school does one specific to the school budget. Uh, I'm going to do one on the combined budget as well. Uh, and it may actually be the presentation we make to the public and to the council. Um, it's it's going to convey the basic messages that we wanted to. Um, it probably ought to be good enough to serve as our formal presentation of the budget. So that remains to be seen. Yes. Uh, that's great. Those slides are good fun. Yeah. And so those examples you said are at this website. Yep. If you go there, you'll see, and you'll see some examples that I think are nothing I would want to put effort into. Like that, some of them are really text heavy to the point where you are yeah. swimming, and you're like, "Why? I don't even know what I'm reading anymore." Um, but it's a good thing to see the spectrum. Take the time and explore. Mm -hmm. I like that. Great fun. Yeah, yeah. that's that awesome. Yeah. That's my favorite. Yeah, that Baltimore. Baltimore? Yeah, yeah, Baltimore and Scottsdale. Scottsdale was a chick. Yeah. But it jumps out. So you don't have to meet to. The plagiarism is widely accepted in the church. I can't say that. 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 I multiple purposes. It might be the piece that you all take with you on your road show. Mm -hmm. Have it as a handout. Could be mailed to the home. I understand that might be something the school wants to do is to do a direct mailer mm -hmm. on your school budget. <laughs> and just like the format takes. And that will be up to you. We'll get that to communication for not them. I mean, that's a piece that we yep. continue yeah. to work with the communications committee on. You guys figure out the numbers. Yep. We'll figure out how to communicate it. So anything else on the improvement list? Do we get to cover that? You guys good? We got our to-do list. The only other
another thing that was on here, and I don't know, Thomas, if you want to talk about a citizen's academy at this time? That's a much longer range goal. The concept that we're still thinking about would probably involve no more than 20 residents a year. And we're thinking the curriculum might involve six to eight sessions. And the intent would be to have, at the end of it, is for folks to have a much better understanding of who we are, what we do, and why we do it. So the curriculum might follow kind of by department. It would be one that would be public works or public safety, or I'd really be interested in doing kind of just a general government and civic lesson. I'm amazed at how many people don't understand the form of government or have an appreciation for why we have the form of government. So the point of all this is at the end of it is that you have folks that are far better informed. I'd like to think, appreciate that we're doing a good job, or at least understand why we're doing it, and become our ambassadors in the community. So for the penetration, for that to really reap rewards, you're talking years down the road of doing this year over year. So it's not a quick fix. And really, for it to be successful, I need full buy-in from my senior staff, because I'd be looking for them to lead those sessions. Right. It'd be a great thing to do off-budget. Right. I think it'd be a good thing. Also a good thing for the counselors to attend. It could be a test. We had talked about maybe doing a test run with committee chairs, and counselors could maybe be part of that test run as well. Who doesn't want to get to go and shoot a gun and drive a saw truck? I'm not saying... That's all new. And they could get a CDL license. To the end of trying to create more ambassadors and a deeper understanding, one of the things that we'll be doing on the school side is educating our teachers and our staff about the budget process and about decisions that we're making. I think that was an area that I definitely fell short last year. And we started by this just in the beginning of the fall, working with some of our... I went to like a K-5 phase level meeting, so all of our K-5 teachers, a couple hundred folks, and then all of our middle school teachers, again, another hundred plus teachers, and just talking to them about where we were, helping them understand that we're wrapping up FY17, which at the time did not yet have a past budget for FY18, and then also beginning to think about FY19 and beyond. And from that, we have sparked some passion in teachers who have a newfound interest in our process, and they're doing a lot of research, and they're thinking about how do we engage our community and what their roles can be. So as that work develops, I think it might be fun to bring some of those folks to a meeting so that you can hear from them some ideas that they have, because they really are digging into the literature and finding out what really works in terms of community engagement, specifically around the budget. We have about 511 staff members, and I think at my last count, 182 residents. At my last count. So not completely up to date or accurate. That's like last year's numbers, but roughly about that percentage. But even from that meeting, and this is to where I think I'm getting... The more conversations I have and interact with people about what we're doing, one of our teachers came up to me at the middle school afterward and said, how would I find out about this in my community? Like, I don't even know what my community does about this. So they don't live in Scarborough, but... And this is someone who's an educator and clearly wants to be engaged in a part of their community, but just doesn't necessarily know how to access it. And so I think much could be the same about our own community members here. So I love us really getting strategic about our timeline and how are we going to really deliver on all of these ideas that we've been talking about over the past year. Okay, so I'm just looking at the time. It's 7.20. So the last bit of new business was the budget drivers. An update from Tom and Julie. Sure. Before I do that, can I just report on two things that I think we will be advancing? And I think they came up somewhere in that conversation, or at least in my brain at that meeting. 
We will be making improvements to the budget portal. Those have been legitimate concerns in the past. It's a great one-stop shop and so clunky, so that's in process. We expect we'll have that delivered for the next budget. And we do expect to be able to hyperlink the budget document, so it's a lot easier to navigate. Again, it's a very valid critique or observation made, and that's something we intend to correct. So those are just a couple of small process improvements that hopefully will be valuable to some. Okay, so update. Budget driver update. Uh, two things I can report. I mean, this is very early. Yes. Uh, we had great news with our health insurance. I reported this out to the council. We had been, uh, our health insurance, we know six months we have to estimate the final six months. We have that estimate is now solid. It was at 15%. It came in at 5 for the majority of our staff. Right. So oh, about a 60, it's a little hard to calculate, at least a $65,000 savings, uh, um, perhaps more. Um, the other matter is currently, in front of council as we speak, we have an opportunity for advanced refunding some debt. So depending on which how we choose to take that those savings, there could be near term benefits to debt service uh, costs going forward. Uh, the big benefit would be in FY19, and it may be a, to our benefit to do that. But there's some choices that we have to make between now and then. Uh, and the other part of that is that we have a much better sense of what uh, the new borrowing for the public safety building. We had modeled it on 3.5% interest. We feel very comfortably based on 10 or so very recent bond issues in Maine uh, that will be comfortably under 3%. And that makes a big difference in terms of interest costs over time. So, you know, that was going to be real money. That will be real money in the FY19 budget on debt service. So I don't have anything that exciting. Coming <laughs> 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 down on the school side of things, we are in the process of um, certifying some of our data with the state um, that will directly impact the funding calculations. So um, I'm feeling really hopeful and optimistic about that work that's happening. We've been really scrubbing the data um, and looking closely at that to make sure that it is very pristine and accurate. Um, just again, trying to maximize any possibilities that we may have in terms of um, benefiting from the increased funding that's going to be in, um, added to the education budget this year, or as we plan to. Um, we're attending all of the CDS meetings on Monday, so that's the Child Development Services meeting, trying to stay um, right in front of that conversation and being actively engaged. So Allison Marchese, our Director of Special Services, goes up to Augusta every Monday um, and participates in that conversation, which is really important that we're being as proactive as we can. And Joanne also has put together a preschool task force um, that will be analyzing costs, looking at effective programming um, across the state and in our neighboring states, um, and really thinking about how do we um, begin to make some incremental improvements toward what we know is going to be coming down the pike. We don't yet know the timeline. We're hearing that the DOE has adjusted the timeline, but they're not telling anyone what it is yet. So we'll wait for that um, in suspense. We're also um, currently under curtailment in the school department. We put that in place um, shortly after the budget passed. Um, just trying to see what we can postpone, um, what we can go without this year to soften the flow, if you will, for lack of a better. September 12th. Um, to be able to soften the impact of what we know is coming as we, um, you know, kind of level out over the next two years and get to the new normal. Uh, the reality of it is, is that um, as the state focuses on equity, more and more of um, that, that local tax burden is going, or more and more of the support for education is going to fall on our local taxpayers so long as Scarborough continues to be a community that's thriving. And so um, I think that's a, you know, a cost benefit, if you will, of our um, success as a community. And so I just want everyone to be focused on that and be thinking about the gifts that brings to our community um, and also the challenges. But we are working hard on the school side to advocate for Scarborough um, in every way that we can, including 
um, our recent site visits with the Department of Education, so we're trying to um, do everything we can to make the list to receive some relief and support in terms of improving our facilities that are undersized and aging. Um, so we're doing that work. So just trying to be really proactive, having conversations about um, not only what we know in the short term, but what we see coming down the pike, you know, one, two, three, five years out so that we can um, really get in front of it and as we continue to assess priorities in our community, we're keeping all of that in balance. Um, I think that'll be really important for us moving forward. I feel like there was something else. Just finally, if I could, Julie, I don't want to speak for you necessarily, um, but I believe we have an agreement. Um, there's a recognition that where the budget conversation starts, it often lingers for six to eight weeks, to, you know, until you get to the end of your review process and it's actually adopted. Um, so where that first headline on budget uh, happens and what it says, <coughs> and that story that follows, <laughs> will linger throughout the whole spring. So I think it's so vitally important to really start off right, and I think we're both committed to doing that. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. That's fair. That's fair. That's yeah. good. That's great. Because that, that sense of perception. That it does. I mean, the local press will cover write an initial budget story, and then it's ready to silence. They don't follow up on all the different finance committee reviews and mm -hmm. this and that. And so that headline lingers literally to the end of the process. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good point. So I, I'm, I'm a little bit more familiar with the town side of the equation than the school. So I, um, how confident are we? CDS hasn't, hasn't become official yet and pre-K has not become official yet. Is that correct? No. So are we getting any support at all from our legislative contingent? Um, in terms of? In terms of advocating for the position that we need them to help us with? I mean, are we, because I think, you know, I, I, I mean, I know there's, there's value to every one of these proposals. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm just wondering if we're going to be in a, another situation as always where we get an unfunded mandate and, and now we're stuck with it. And is that, are, so are we reaching out to our legislative contingent and saying, okay, if you're going to implement this, can you stage it? Can you phase it? Is there a way to lessen the impact on communities like ours so that we can gradually absorb these costs and not just get whacked with it at the end of a year like it seems to be happening a lot lately? So we don't know enough yet to, I think they're still trying to sort all of those things out and really understanding what it means for the schools to take over that responsibility. We don't have clear direction if it means that we're going to have to have free school programs or if it means that we're just going to have to coordinate services or, I mean, we just, there's way more questions than answers right now, but um, for folks who are interested in following the process, they do do a great job of posting all the agendas and the minutes on the DOE website, um, and I'm happy to share that link out with everyone. Um, but it's just, we don't know what we don't know right, right. now, but I do um, hear what you're saying about reaching out, and that's something. Well, but Julie and I talked just a few days ago about bringing the legislators back in again, just like we have every year in February. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm and saying those exact questions to them. Yeah, I mean, I think it's one thing to, to kind of put them in the hot seat, so to speak, and say, mm -hmm. what are you doing? What have you done for me lately? I just, I, I mean, if we're in the ground, if we're in the, if Augusta's right now forming these these mm -hmm. policies, I would hope that we would have a seat at that table from a legislative perspective where we could start having those discussions where you would meet, you know, express your concerns with our mm -hmm. community. And I'm not just talking about the Scarborough reps. We, yeah. we overlap with mm -hmm. Cape and Gorham and, and others as well, mm -hmm. saying, hey, these are our concerns. Mm -hmm. You need to know these things when you're sitting at the table. What are you doing to help getting, getting our concerns out there so that we can help shape this policy and not react to it when it comes down the pipe? Yeah, that's um, why it's been so important for Allison to be at the table. And as mm -hmm. the superintendents in the area, we're also advocating together. And um, we have two superintendents who are on that advising committee. So that's really, really helpful. And I think that's a bit of a transformation, Joanne. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the DOE seems to be doing a better job of actually reaching out to practitioners and asking for input as they're making decisions as opposed to waiting till after the fact. And so that's through MPA then? Is that who you're um, that, that's Well, going so through mm -hmm. the, we have NSSA, which yeah. is the Maine Superintendent, School Superintendent Association, and then MSMA, which is Maine School Management Association. Mm -hmm. um, they came to our last regional meeting um, along with the commissioner 
and um, several of his staff. So they were di having direct conversations with us about the impact. So they're well aware of it, which I think um, is why the timeline is being pulled back a little bit. But I will say that um, it's very clear in listening to our Commissioner of Education speak that um, she's not okay with children not getting services, and that's what's happening right now. Right. So there's a bit of a crisis, and uh, to me, I think it, it is all hands on deck for that. I don't think it'll be a fully unfunded mandate. I, I don't think it'll be fully funded either. Mm -hmm. But right now, my understanding is that 70% of the schools in Maine already have some form of preschool. Mm -hmm. So we're behind the um, ball a little bit, if you will. We don't have any form of, of public preschool in Scarborough yet. Um, and part of that challenge will be space, but we're looking at um, next year we could possibly have like a classroom available where we could begin to explore some things, and that's why Joanne is leading the task force, so we can try to test out some things and be as proactive as we can. When it does come to our delegation, our staff are particularly well positioned. I assume Senator Willett um, yeah. yes, continue to be education right. focused. She's, a, right. yeah. she's one of the but she's also eligible right. people in the legislature on. Yeah, and I, I think, I, I, but we have to reach out to them first. Yeah. We have yeah. to make them aware of what you know. We want to shape those right. conversations. So yes. the vocal of course, right. is now a, a new, pretty powerful leadership position. Right. So yeah. right. What majority? What? But I, but I also. So I'm wondering too. You know, again, is, this is going to impact all of us. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I don't know what we do from a town perspective, but I, I think maybe that's part of the discussions that we start having here. Is how do we advocate properly as a community, not as a school department or as a council, but how do we do it as a community? And how do we, you know, how do we make sure that our, our, our voices, we're comfortable that it's at least being heard. It may not, I mean, like everything else, we may not have that much influence on it, but at least we're comfortable that the message is getting up there that, hey, you know, you've got to take these things into consideration because. Yeah, yeah I think that message is up there and it's loud and clear. Yeah. I think that what, Scarborough as a town might want to do is um, get really clear around what our values are when it comes to early childhood education and early intervention. Um, and so that would give me a bit more direction in what I'm advocating for. Again, just, you know, when you think about, there's so many different pieces to this whole idea of bringing in even just the four-year-olds because we have so many businesses in our town. You, if, if we could bring them in, if we had the space to bring them in, if we can't, then partnerships with the businesses that are out there are probably gonna make more sense. But from what I know about what's happening in this community now, they're already over-enrolled, right. and they're two years out on a wait list. Right, a, there is a, there is a um, serious need in Scarborough, mm -hmm. and what, um, what we also know is, you know, the return on investment of early childhood education is it, it's pretty much the best investment you can make short of ensuring that all kids can read. Um, and that's obviously a part of that. So I think that, again, getting really clear about how proactive we want to be as a community will be an important message for the school department to receive um, as we start to make some decisions because there is a need um, and I think that we do have the infrastructure where we could do it well, but it will obviously cost money. And there had been in the past a little bit of money available to start to set up these four-year-old programs, and that's why so many towns went and did it. They got a little bit of money, and they, they gathered money. together one class, and next year was two classes. Mm -hmm. And, and there's still is, there is some funding opportunity, grant opportunities available mm -hmm. currently. So we brought in a woman from the state to talk to us about this about a year and a half ago. And it's probably a good idea for us to touch base with her again and also touch base with the people in this town who have businesses and what kind of impact that would bring to their business. You know, and there's just so many aspects to this to be considered. But I think we're, once again, we're kind of behind the eight ball in taking any steps towards addressing this do we expect any impact in FY19? We don't know yet. Uh, the original timeline uh, had some districts would have been required to be begin providing services as early as July 1, 2018. Um, so that's right at the start of our FY19 budget. Again, we're hearing that the timeline's been adjusted. We're hoping that means that it's providing more time for planning, but we just don't have clear clarity on that yet. 
and Joanne, as you're connecting with the local preschools, um, I think that we can kind of do a two-for-one conversation and talk about bef um, start time changes. So I, I, I mean, I guess my mm -hmm. thing is uh, there's, there's clearly an issue here for services, but it's because the state's fallen short from the get-go. So now I feel like we're going to get stuck holding the bag again because the state yeah. can't get a program together and they can't fund it properly. Yeah. And we're going to be left holding the bag again. So. Um, that's just my initial reaction without knowing the details of it. Right. Um, yeah, you know. I think that um, the current CDS program is, is proven to be inefficient and ineffective. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also a talent shortage. There's children of those ages need um, services like o occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech, and there are just not enough skilled workers. So my concern is are we just shifting the burden um, although we already provide those services in our schools, um, those are positions that are often challenging for us to fill. And so um, also working with our higher ed partners to, you know, learn more about how they're offering those degrees and certifications. So I think that's probably a discussion for a different time. Yeah. <laughs> or a continuing, <laughs> continuation. Ongoing. Ongoing. Um, so, meeting recap, takeaways, and to do. Want me to go down my list? To make sure I got everything. Um, Kate, I have you updating the norms sheet and adding goals to it. Yep. Your two bullet points. Um, the next meeting will be December 19th, 6 to 7:30 p.m. Julie's going to check on availability of the room. And Peter and Jody are going to let the communications committees know about the meeting and invite them to join us. Then with regards to the community dialogue, I have Julie and Tom are going to um, touch base with Jen Lim and the IT people on what it would entail to sort of replicate community dialogue um, for a budget dialogue. And I don't have down here really a timeline. I think we talked early February, then it got to pushed out a little bit to March, and then it came back to January. So that's, that's on you we'll to, to back, yeah. talk with yeah. Um Then Peter and I are also going to report back on the 19th about um, the road show and come up with a list of places to go and try to keep it to seven different places so the then we can for yeah, pair off. Um, nicely, and you know, nice. Riley's and the brewery can't be. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Right now. Those are yeah. communal places. <laughs> <It's gathering>. um, <laughs> and I think that's all I had for my. Um, the one other thing, Jody, I think is that we'll work up a draft calendar to sort of yeah. mapping oh, right. out the dates that we've agreed on, more. Yes, and then we'll leaving. Up, we'll, we can collaborate on that to make sure it's fair. We can leave space for some of the things that you guys are working on and, and then plug them in at time. Okay. And should I add to my list here um, yeah. that I type this up for people to do, or are we all good? Everyone knows what they have to do. I think that would be okay. great to document in our archives. And send it everyone. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can send yeah, and create a shared, can we also create a shared joint town council joint School board finance committee folder. Oh, our G drives don't talk to each other, do they? Yeah. Well, you know, we can share it outside yeah. of our thing. Yeah. So, so if we had a shared a folder, so then share. everything could just go right into the folder instead of needing to worry about emailing out. Emailing out. Yeah, that would be great. Mm -hmm. I can totally do that when I do this. Part. <coughs> yes. What about should we put um, anything on the list about CCR? We'll provide. The, well, I don't I know. Send that, and someone can type in the. The link right at the bottom. Do you want me to come in with a draft of the 19th meeting? Is that what you're asking? Of what yeah. Star Rose might look like, you mean? Yeah. Uh, I can make it without any text. We're four months away from having. Yeah. We can. It's going to change between now and then. Well, How about on my takeaway, I just write oh. the address there on the bottom. Be happy we're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That yeah. people can it. start yeah. going to. Now, wait a minute, now you've changed the rules already because now we're assigning things for people to do to make sure we have pull through. So. Yeah, we do. We've got plenty on this list. We Although started. your list yes, is very short. Much <laughs> short. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm you stop short. talking now. Yeah. <laughs> Jody, motion to adjourn. <laughs> yes, so there's uh, the next item is public in input. Do you have anything you would like to 
say? No? You're good? Okay. So, adjourned. We're good? Everybody good? Everybody good. Okay, thanks everyone. Everybody have a great day.